Six months ago, we bought a thousand watts worth of flexible solar panels. And now flexible solar panels don't really have the best reputation out there because they're known for efficiency loss, heat spots, cracking. But we bought from a reputable brand that was known for their durability. So in this video, we are gonna tell you our view of how they've held up so far. So if you're new to our channel, we are Gabby and Brendan. We have been living in our RV full time since January, so about the past nine months. Um, when we were renovating our RV, we were looking for a solution to install solar onto the, our rooftop. So we knew that we wanted to rip everything out, get a battery system, put solar on the top, and we were really on a search for what would be the best option for us. So a few of the things that we were considering is we didn't want to add too much weight to the roof. We didn't really know what our holding capacities were and we didn't also want to get the RV weighed. Um, so that was a consideration. And we also wanted an easy install that we wouldn't have to be drilling a bunch of holes into our roof and causing a bunch of points of potential leakages. So that kind of led us down the path of flexible solar panels. So a reason why we went with this panel as opposed to some of the other panels on the market Honestly, the biggest thing was durability. So the biggest thing I saw with other flexible panels was people said they would bend them slightly or maybe when they were installing, they'd like accidentally lean on it or put a knee on it and it would crack the cells really easily. So they weren't the most uh, durable products out there. From what I understand, they're really just like rigid panels if you take the glass away. So you're just removing the protection layer. The difference of this panel by Bouge RV they claim that it is really super durable. So it can bend up to 270 degrees. So it's pretty flexible. You're not gonna cause any issues by doing this. It's mainly just this direction. It doesn't really wanna bend the other way. Um, so that was one thing. They also have ad promos of people like stepping on them, like hitting them with a baseball bat, all kinds of things to kind of prove the durability. But that was kind of a reason we were open-minded to going with a flexible panel versus a rigid one. So we were sold on the Arch 100 watt panel. And when we initially started with our RV, we bought five of these panels. So we had a 500 watt setup on the front of the RV. And uh, we also have a 3.6 kilowatt battery. So we figured that was good enough for us to start. We just wanted to see how the solar would hold up. And probably about after six weeks to two months with 500 watts, we were so happy with the panel's performance that we said, let's go ahead and order another 500. Uh, our roof had the space for it so we went ahead and got five more panels bringing us to a thousand watts and with that insulation process it was super easy we actually did it while we were on the road visiting brendan's parents so thank you uh in-laws for allowing us to do the insulation in front of your house and literally the entire insulation which we do have a video of that we'll link here uh in total probably took us an hour and a half maybe two hours if i recall correctly it was a bit ago uh but it was such an easy process just clipped everything together and we were able to to plug in so that was a huge benefit of going with flexible that the installation process was a super super easy thing to do that you could just even do it on the road all right guys so we made it up on the roof behind us we have our panels before i kind of tell you a bit about the performance i just wanted to note the reason we went with 100 watt panels is for one it gave us a bit more options of configuration of how we could lay them out on our roof because of course on your roof you have obstacles uh like your ac we have our starlink mounted up here if you have fans um and then as well as 100 volts allowed us to work within the voltage limits of our power station so we actually originally wanted to work i believe they have a 200 watt option so that way we wouldn't have as many panels but because of voltage ultimately led us to the 100 watt uh, option but in terms of performance of these panels it's actually something that we were very impressed with we've heard um, a ton when it comes to panels that if there's any sort of shading that entire um, setup of panels that you have it's it's going to be put out you're not going to be putting any output of power just even if one panel is shaded as long as they're all connected together Shockingly, with these panels, we have actually parked next to trees, and we know for a fact that they are shaded, and we're still getting output. Um, there's also been times that it's raining, it's a thunderstorm. You can't even see the sun in the sky, but we're still, once again, getting output. And I'm not talking crazy numbers, but I would say in conditions that I would expect us to be getting nothing. We've seen these panels output anywhere between, I would say on the lower end, 70 watts up to 250 watts. And that's not really a ton, 
But if it's gonna rain all day, that allows us to power our Starlink, our TV, play some Xbox, whatever we wanna do without really draining our battery. So really, really awesome performance that we've seen from these guys so far in terms of power output, but with all the good, sometimes comes bad. So I'm gonna have Brendan tell you a bit more about that. Okay, now to get into the issues that we unfortunately have dealt with. So the first main issue that we noticed is that I'm kind of anal about tracking the solar input every day. So I'm constantly checking my EcoFlow app to see like what, what wattage are we producing? How high is it going? And it does fluctuate depending on like what are the conditions of the sky? What are the conditions of what's the temperature outside can affect it. And I did notice probably after a month of installing our second set of five panels that we weren't producing as much watts as we normally were when we first installed them. So just as a pre preliminary check, I went up onto the roof to see what was going on. So the first thing that I noticed when coming onto the roof was there was a panel back here that was starting to develop uh, a little bit of a hot spot. It has gotten a little bit worse since it began, but there's, you can see kind of there's like a, I don't know, almost like a burn mark here and then like white splotches. Honestly, at first I just thought it was dirty. And so I just like tried wiping it a lot and try to clean it. Uh, but after looking up photos online, that's pretty much what it is, is a hot spot. And so I was like, man, that's our issue. That's the reason that we're not producing as many watts. Um, and so I tested the voltage of all the panels. This voltage was actually fine. Um, so I was trying to figure out what the issue was. And so I came back to where our panels are connected into parallel. I could unclip these two groups of panels that we had. And I saw that actually the front panels were producing a lower voltage than the back ones. And so I realized the wattage difference actually wasn't because of that hotspot panel. And I'll show you what the problem was. So it was actually that this panel right here, which was showing no defect at all, was not producing any voltage. It didn't have any output. And so that was dropping the whole wattage maximum of the, of the system as a whole, um, basically because this one was producing lower voltage. This whole series could only produce a uh, lower maximum and that basically brought our whole maximum solar output down to about 800 and it was a thousand before so yeah basically identified that one of our panels wasn't outputting at all and the other panel had a hot spot even though that one was still producing so after all this experience we reached out to the bouge rv support team um, and in the process of kind of going back and forth with them they asked us to take some voltage readings of the panels, send some photos. They have a little like serial number on the, on the junction box there. Um, so in the process of taking more photos and going up on the roof again, I actually noticed another hotspot on a different one of the panels. So this one was all the way up front here. Um, this one's not as bad, but there's a little hotspot. So it looks similar to the other one, but just not as big, I would say. That one didn't actually affect the output either. So we were a little confused. We had some panels that had hot spots. They didn't seem to be dropping wattage. And then we had another panel that had no visible sign of defect and it wasn't producing at all. So we were really frustrated. We were trying to get some replacement panels. Um, ultimately, Bouge did send us a few replacement panels for our inconvenience. So we decided to replace the one that wasn't outputting voltage. And we also did this on the road, but the caveat was that we were running low on VHB tape. It's held up on the rest of our panels so well that we didn't necessarily have concerns that maybe we don't need as much as we put on last time. So let me show you this. This panel is not attached. <laughs> and below it lies where the replacement panel that we installed once laid. So when we were driving, we were doing probably 60 miles per hour on a highway, heard something that came from the roof and immediately I knew one of our panels flew off and I had a strong feeling it was the one that we kind of chinsed out on VHB tape. The rest of our panels, I could say VHB tape, does an incredible job when installed properly. I think we had a false sense of security of how much to do. So if you guys do go the VHB route, absolutely keep in mind that you're using enough. We did prep the space with alcohol, but I think really our flaw was not using enough VHB tape. So this one is a bit of a disposable or um, a deployable, I should say. This panel here is like a deployable panel. So when we go to places, if we want more output, we'll put it on. 
we don't have any more VHB tape, so that's the reason we have it like that. And the rest of the 900 watts we have works just fine for us. Um, so just kind of wanted to mention that uh, when it comes to the installation process and kind of how our warranty process worked. So overall, our experience with these Bouge RV arch panels and just flexible panels in general has been a really mixed bag. Um, honestly, I think these panels aren't bad. Um, it might have just been that we we bought them as they were like just coming out. We got some of the first batches. I do think they probably perform better than most other flexible panels, but I'm not sure that we would do the same thing in the future. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't. I mean, we bought 10 panels and three of them went bad. So even though two of them still perform, the hotspots perform, the hotspots are still there. So in my opinion, you know, 30% went bad of our batch. Yes, warranty helped us out. They sent us out new ones. So that's great to have, but there's definitely some flaws. You know, yeah. I wasn't happy with you know, first of all, them, you know, having these issues. And on top of the VHB installation, VHB is so nice to install, but man, is it a pain in the <laughs> butt to get off. There's pros and cons to everything. So when we had to take off uh, the ones to replace, uh, I used a multi-tool and, you know, using a multi-tool on a rubber roof is very much what probably feels like a very bad plastic surgery job. You're just trying to keep everything as neat as possible. And, and it's a difficult thing to do so I think if we were to go with flexible panels again in the future I definitely don't think I would want to use VHB tape especially across 10 panels because if anything goes wrong you're leaving yourself with a lot of work but their support team was pretty good overall like they did send us out new panels it wouldn't have been nearly as big of an issue if we could have just removed them and put them on again so that's probably what I would do in the future and that's what I would recommend to someone in our position all right, guys, so to wrap up this video, I would say main takeaways are really going to be two points. One, these panels, they actually had pretty darn good performance in the shade when it was rainy, cloudy day. We were very impressed, especially at the price point they come. I think that they were kind of a heavy hitter in that category. The second point, though, is, of course, the issues that we experienced. Probably the biggest takeaway, if you do go with a flexible solar panel installation, I would want to make sure that it is serviceable. Things can happen, and we were definitely just young and ignorant on our first install, and we thought everything would be, you know, ice cream and rainbows, nothing would go wrong, which totally is not the case. Not only in RV life, if you live on a boat, if you're doing this, you know, on a work shed, wherever, I think all solar panels really should be installed in a form that they're serviceable, just because so many factors can happen. Yeah, not, not just with flexible panels, with rigid panels, panels as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely, you know, we've talked about, you know, uh, upgrading our rig, doing an RV 2.0 in that installation. I definitely think Unistrouts would be a part of that. I think that's kind of seems like the best way to go. But overall, guys, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as it helps us to keep making content like this, to keep informing you guys of what works and doesn't work in the space. Also, stay in tune for our channel. Um, stay tuned to our channel because we're headed to San Francisco next and we're working our way to Albuquerque to hit up Balloon Fiesta. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. We'll catch you in the next one.